I'm gonna show you in the Bible that this man, this picture right here, is nowhere in the Bible. Wrong. Right. The description of this man right here is nowhere in the Bible. If we knew that as 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 a youth growing up, you know what I'm saying, we would treat ourselves differently. You know what I'm saying, we would treat each other differently. Do you know that this is prophesied to be in the Bible that this is what happened to a certain nation of people? Do you know that this was in the Bible? Right. So in order to not dishonor Christ, what should you do? Yeah, hey, how you doing, my brother? I don't want you to take a look at this sign right here, like. <clears throat> on one side is what we're called in the Bible, and on the other side is what we're called in society. Where you see yourself at on the sign right here? You say American black. You're American black. So you're so you're from the um, the tribe of Judah. Say again. You're black. Is what 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 is your father? He's black. He's your Spanish. My mom is white. Your mom is white, but your, your, pop, your father is black and Spanish, okay? Uh, give me that in Book of Numbers, chapter 1 of 8, because this is how we determine, you know what I'm saying, our, our lineage or who or our background or where we come from according to the Bible. Because that's what we are here teaching, who we are according to the Bible and what it takes to get into the kingdom of heaven. I know as you was walking up here, I say, I ask you, you know what I'm saying, who you are? Most of our people would know it. They would say, like, African-American or, or, or um, uh, 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 Baptist or something like that. That, that. that doesn't even really make sense, you know what I mean? So, but, read this. Numbers, chapter 1, verse 18. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. So they gather everybody together, right, on the first day of the second month. Read. And they declare their pedigrees. So when you hear the word pedigree, what do you, what would you what comes to mind when you hear the word pedigree? You uh, think about breeding a dog. When you breed a dog, yeah, they, it, that's like like your lineage. It tells you exactly what you are, your pedigree. So it say it declares their pedigree, read their lineage, who they are, read after their families by the house of their father. So wherever your father is, that's what you are. See, my father would be, uh, be considered American black man. So I will say I'm a, a, a black, right? So I'll be from the tribe of Judah also. So that's what we are here teaching our people, who we are according to the Bible and what it takes to get into the kingdom of heaven. But what makes you think that's so important? You know what I'm saying? Why do we have to come out here in our streets and tell our young men and tell our young women, even our older um, uh, uh, people, who we are according to the Bible? So it will shape our community because what guess what happened? It it changes it changes our mind. So I'm gonna ask you one question: Who is this guy right here on this sign right here? Who would you say this person right here? You say that is Jesus Christ? Can you prove that in the Bible? You can. How? What? Give me a scripture. Okay, so this is what we are here to do. When we when we say something, when we ask you a question, we're going to make sure, because we want you to do the same thing. So we want you to, if God asks you to give me a scripture, right? Because we're going to give you everything that we know out of this Bible. And it, yeah, okay, so I'm going to give you some good news right now, because you say that you think that this man right here is Christ. I'm going to show you in the Bible that this man, this picture right here, is nowhere in the Bible. Wrong. Right. The description of this man right here is nowhere in the Bible. Okay, so we're gonna we gonna we gonna give you a description, but the Bible tells us to do this all also. Read. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-one. Prove all things. So I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna prove to you that this right here is not Jesus Christ at all. All right. The book of Revelation chapter one and verse one. Read yeah. with you. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 the revelation of Jesus Christ when it says the revelation what does that what, the, what does that bring to mind huh 
Okay, revelation, that's good. Revelation means revealing. So this is the revealing of Jesus Christ, all right? Read. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. So that him is John the Baptist. He's, he was, he about to give John the Baptist a vision, all right? And he gonna tell John the Baptist, you know what I'm saying, to make sure you do something specifically what I'm about to show you, verse 10. Verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. So this is John, John the Baptist. He said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He heard a voice behind him so loud it sounded like a trumpet, read. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega. That voice said, I am Alpha and Omega, read. The first and the last, read. what thou seest. So he said, what you see, it's very important. What you see, but right now we're about to reveal to you what Jesus Christ looked like. So he's telling John Baptist right now, what you see, read. Write in a book. Write it in a book. Check it out. So it won't be no question when somebody go back and read it. When you will actually, when you, so from now on out, when somebody tell you or ask you what Jesus Christ looked like, we're about to let you know right now. So after this, you should, you should not have a, 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 a doubt in your mind, you know what I'm saying, what Christ looked like, all right? Read. And a sinner, verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool. So when we think about wool, what did you, what do you think about? Thick curly hair, right? That's so right. This, this man right here has thick curly hair. No, it's straight, it's straight, it's straight as an arrow, right? Right. Wow. One strike, read. As white as snow. And it's not white, right? Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So when it says his eyes was as a flame of fire, that means his eyes was red because Christ will, uh, drank wine moderately. You know, they called him a wine bill. You know what I'm saying? So and you can see all these pictures. This guy's eyes right here just as white, you know what I'm saying? Just as clear as he want to be, right? You with me, bro? What's your name is? I'm sorry. My name is Intellis, Tony. All right? So it says his hairs were white like wool, you know what I'm saying? As white as snow, and his eyes was as a flame of fire because he drunk wine moderately, his eyes always stayed red, right? Read. And his feet! Now we're gonna talk about his body. So it says, and his feet, all right? Read. Like unto fine brass! So when he was looking at his feet, he said, okay, his feet look like fine brass. What color is brass? Brass, yeah, with a beat. Yeah, it has a brown tinge to it, like a, a penny almost, right? Brown, right? Read. Now, that's we're going to see, he's going to tell you just how brown or just how brown his feet is, right? Read. As if they burn in a furnace. If you take that brown and you burn it, what color is it, it going to turn? It's going to turn black, right? That's right. So is this man right here black? In any way, form, or fashion, you don't see that, right? So as we as we have up here a more clearer depiction of what Christ may look like. This we're not saying that this picture right here is Christ, but as as the, uh, we read, this is what more Christ would probably would look like—a black man, just like me and you. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying this is the true depiction of Christ. So when now you ask, you know what I'm saying, what Christ looked like, you will know that Christ is a black man. You know what I'm saying? Just like me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's very important for you to know because if we knew that as, as, as a youth growing up, you know what I'm saying? We would treat ourselves differently. You know what I'm saying? We would treat each other differently. We won't have all this black on black crime. We won't have a lot of hatred. We won't have nobody, uh, uh, you won't have to be worried about if somebody step on your shoes or you step on somebody's shoes, they ready to fight, you know what I'm saying? Ready to shoot you down. You know what I'm saying? You won't have to worry about that stuff if we looked at each other, you know what I'm saying, like Christ. Because we God made us in his image. You know what I'm saying? So we should be looking at each other like gods on this earth. You know what I'm saying? Like brother, we should be treating each other like that, but we don't treat each other like that. So, but that, like I said, we are here to teach our people who we are according to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to go back to how we know that we're God's chosen people. Look at this sign right here. How many people in this world have you known that this has actually happened to them? How many race of people have you known besides the so-called, I'm going to just tell you, besides the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Have you ever known this to happen to anybody else? anybody else in the field. Do you know that this is prophesied to be in the Bible, that this is what happened to a certain nation of people? Do you know that this was in the Bible? But see, this is the things that was... Did you go to church? Not really. Yeah. Say again now. 
Oh, so you up here for college, all right? So growing up, have you ever experienced any type of church at all? Yeah, okay. What type of Baptist, Catholic? Ain't was a Baptist church. So you you seen you probably haven't even seen the image that in any type of church though, and you growing up, y'all probably seen this image right here. So right now, we about to give you an understanding of why this happened to a, only a certain nation of people. Like you say, only the blacks. This hasn't happened to everybody. I haven't seen so-called white man or so-called Chinese man in shackles or, or, or um, rods of iron across, around their neck. I haven't seen this in history. I haven't seen those pictures, but I always see these pictures right here, all right? Now, we're going to go back a little bit because this goes back to who we were according to the Bible. Uh, uh, we were going to talk about, have you ever uh, familiar with the story of Moses? familiar with the story of Moses. So we're going to go back to, now Moses got us in the wilderness, right? And there's only one nation of people that he got in the wilderness. That's the same nation, that's the same people that he led out of Egypt into the wilderness, right? And he gave those people uh, uh, law, statutes, commandments from the Most High God. He didn't give all those statutes and commandments to everybody else. It was only those people in the wilderness, right? Deuteronomy 1 and 1, then we're going to go to uh, 28 and 15. Because it's important to know, you know what I'm saying, how we link ourselves to this Bible and know that we as a nation of people that we have a job to do, especially as men, that we got to keep the Most High God's laws, statutes, and commandments if we want to get into the kingdom of heaven. But we're not being taught that. We've been taught that the Most High God's laws and statutes and commandments was done away with. You know what I'm saying? All we got to do is come to church and pay a tithe uh, and say hallelujah and we'll get into the kingdom of heaven. You know, so in that day, say, God, forgive me and I'm good. It's not going to happen like that, all right? Read what you got. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses Speak unto all Israel. To everybody on the earth. All Israel. So he only spoke these words unto the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that you see on this sign. The people that you see on this sign right here, these words that you're about to hear, Moses is only speaking to these people, all right? 28 uh, verse 1. Because right now we're about to hear those ultimatums that the Most High God gave these his people. He gave him two ultimatums, all right? And we're about to hear the first one. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the word hearken means listening. So it said, come to pass if we listen diligently unto the voice of the word thy God. Put that on. Read. To observe and to do all his commandments. And we're supposed to observe and to do all his commandments. Because when we came out, when we came out of the uh, um, out of Egypt, Moses went into the mountain. He came down with laws, statutes, commandments that he gave to this nation of people. All right. He said, if we do, if we do those commandments, if we listen, read, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So if we did what the Most High God told us to do, that He was going to sit the nation of Israel above every other nation upon the earth. We chose the other, we chose the latter. Verse 15. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass, if thou art not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if we didn't listen to what the Most High God say, read. To observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So it's a curse a good thing or a bad thing? You know. It's a bad thing, right? So we chose not to do what the Most High God told. I'm just going to skip you straight up. We chose not to do so. We was cursed. All right, so I'm going to read you a couple of curses that happened to this nation of people that, I, that you should know that it happened to nobody else on the planet Earth, right? Verse 16. Verse 16. Uh -huh. Cursed shall thou be in the city. The Bible says that we're going to be cursed in the city and cursed shall thou be in the field. We're going to be cursed in the field. Now, like I was showing you on this sign right here, when it says that we're going to be cursed in the field, as so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we was going through slavery. What we was doing in those fields? We were having a good time out there in the field. We were out there picking cotton, picking sugar cane. You know what I'm saying? we were dropped out when we got off those slave ships, this was, this, that, that was the condition that we was in. And the Bible says that we're going to be cursed in the city. Right now, you go to any state, any anywhere you go in, and you look for a so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American in that in that area, where you most likely gonna find them at? In the hood. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's a curse, because we're not in the suburbs. You know what I'm saying? We don't have all the big houses and the lavish things all the time. We don't own Zocados. We don't own this gas station right here. Our people don't own it. You know what I'm saying? We know that other nations own this stuff. That's a curse that was put upon us. And this also happened to us, too, verse 32. Verse 32, 
Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. The Bible says that when we get off those slave ships or when we was in slavery, that our sons and our daughters were gonna be given unto another people. That didn't happen to everybody, either, right? And this is how I said it will happen, read. And thy eyes shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long. Did we have any power to have or any say so about what happened once we got off those slaves or what happened to our youngins, what happened to our wife? Or our, we didn't have any of those, those slaves. They say, that's why I say our eyes are going to be looking and longing for them all the day long. Because we're just going to be crying and we're going to be hoping or thanking us something, some way, somehow, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that we get back to whoever or try to get them back. But it wasn't going to happen because this was a curse that was put on us by the Most High God. Right. Now I'm going to get straight to the point because have you ever, you know about, you heard about slave ships, right? You, you know about slave ships, right? You heard a little bit about it. That only happened to a certain nation of people. You knew that was in the Bible also. You, so this is thing that we're not being taught. A, a lot of stuff that we're being taught from uh, youth or we're being taught right in these churches, a lot of things that we're going through as a nation of people right there, we won't go through because we are realizing how special that we are and what we actually do, gotta do in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. A lot of them are the states and a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world, it wouldn't be going on if we actually knew who we are and what we have to do according to this Bible. And that's what we are here to might make sure that we are teaching our people those right things. And then before you leave, I'm gonna read this, um, read this one, and then I'm gonna give you a law that I know that you was never taught. You know what I'm saying? But it's something that you could uh, 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 turn away from. You know what I'm saying? And never do again. You know what I'm saying? All right, read. Verse 68. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So like I spoke earlier, when when we uh, went into the wilderness, we just came out of Egypt. Now the Bible says that we're gonna go back into Egypt again, Deuteronomy chapter five and six. So we're gonna see what he's actually talking about. Cause you know, when we came out of Egypt, what happened? Moses parted the Red Sea and we walked out of Egypt, right? But now he's telling us that we're gonna go back into Egypt again, but let's see what Egypt actually means, read. Deuteronomy chapter five, verse six. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. He said he brought us out of the land of Egypt, read, from the house of bondage. Now he said he, he say Egypt was the house of bondage. So now when we go back to Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68, we're going to see exactly what he's talking about when he says Egypt. Because when he's talking about Egypt, he's making Egypt equal with bondage or slavery. You understand what I'm saying? Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. With ships. So how did we, like I said earlier, we walked out of Egypt. Now he said we're going to go back into Egypt again, which is slavery, right? He say with ships. You didn't know that that was in the Bible. This is uh, this is a, a prophecy saying that because we broke the Most High God's law, statutes, commandments, that we was going to be put on those slave ships and we are going to be brought over here as slaves. Finish reading. By the way, world, I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Just like it happened. When we got off those ships, what happened? We straight got to work. We were sold. You know what I'm saying? We, was, we went this way. Somebody else went that way. Another family member went that way. And they were just auctioning us off. We were sold unto our enemies. And we know who those people were that was buying us off those slave ships. The so-called white man. The so-called Arab. The so-called even the so-called African man. All these other nations had something to do with our slavery. Right. I saw your eyes kind of got big when I say the so-called African man. Why you? Why? Why y'all did that? You ain't expect that because you think we the same people, don't you? Give me that. The Bible. The, the Bible is very specific. That's why I asked you this question. I saw your eyes buckle a little bit. No, we're not African. That's right. We're Israelites. We're God's That's chosen right. people. Right. You know what I'm saying? We may come from that continent or that area. You know what I'm saying? But we're the greatest people that ever walked this planet Earth. You understand what I'm saying? Read right. what you got. Exodus chapter 11, verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. He said not against one shall not a dog move his tongue against the nation of Israel. That's what he's talking about. All these other nations, he's called them dogs. We, 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 we don't get this Bible rough and raw like we should. You know what I'm saying? When we, when we get the Bible the right way, it opens, it makes our eyes bubble. You know what I'm saying? It opens our mind up. It makes us understand, okay, something going on here because I haven't never heard this like I heard it, like I'm hearing it now. You understand what I'm saying? Read it. Against men or beasts that you may know how that the Lord put a difference. He say, I, he say, I put a difference 
between the Egyptians, Africans, and Israel. And the so-called, in the excuse me, in the nation of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He said, we're not African. But I'm putting the difference between them right now so y'all know that they, they were not the same people. You understand what I'm saying? So, uh, um, how you get into the kingdom of heaven, my bro? Say again? Doing, you say doing, following, doing, but well, that's that's good, that's good, that's good. But the Bible is very specific. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the two more scriptures, and then we're gonna be ending it. All right? Read. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So this one going to Christ and he asking Christ, What do I do in order to get it? What do I need to do in order to get into the kingdom of heaven? All right? Read. And he said unto them. Why callest thou me good? There is no good but one. That is God. So there's a distinction between Christ and God, all right? He just gave it to you. He said there's only one that's good. That's God. Read. But if thou wilt enter into life, if you want to get into the kingdom, keep thy commandments. We got to be keeping the most, the most high God's laws, statutes, commandments. That's the only way that we're going to get into the kingdom of heaven, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm going to give you one commandment right now that you didn't know that you you was breaking, but right now, knowing that who you are according to, according to this Bible, or learning who you are according to the Bible, learning that you know as your, as an Israelite, you gotta keep most high God's laws, statutes, and commandments in order to get into the kingdom of heaven. I just gotta give you this little tidbit before you leave, all right? Read. First Corinthians, chapter 11, verse three. Uh -huh. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, uh -huh. and the head of Christ is God. So there's a hierarchy. There's God, Christ, man, then women. He just gave us the hierarchy of how uh, um, the rulership should go, all right? Read. Every man praying or prophesying. So when it says every man praying or prophesying, that means when you hear the Bible come a lot, unless you're reading the Bible or you actually hearing it, all right? Read. Having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So I just gave you a hierarchy. God, Christ, man, and then women. It says every man praying and prophesying, having his head covered, dishonor of his head. So as man, who is our head? God, then Christ. Yes, Christ is our head. So and we, we have, and we hear that all the time. Don't worry about it. That's, that's just show you how hatred our people are really are. You know what I'm saying? When they, because the, the devil gonna come out. You know what I'm saying? When the word is coming. Right. And I'm about to give you this law right now, just to test your faith, right? Quick. Like, so the Bible says, every man praying and prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. You say our head is Christ, right? So right now, you in the midst of prophecy. You hear the Bible. You know, and, and we're speaking the Bible. So you having your head covered dishonoring Christ right now. Right. So in order to not dishonor Christ, what should you do? I'm listening. All praises to the most high. You know what that's called? Acts 3 verse 19, then we're closing up. It's real simple. You just didn't know that you did something that was a, a good act. It's called repentance. It's called hearing the Most High God's law, statute, and commandments, knowing that you was breaking it, and then you stop breaking it. It's just that easy. Right. But with the, but the uh, uh, Christian church make it seem like it's so hard. Like uh, you can't repent or you can't keep all the Most High God's law, statutes, and commandments. That's because they refuse to tell you the Most High God's law, statutes, and commandments in order to keep getting your money. Right. That's all they gonna want you to come get your tithe, sow a seed, and you gonna be blessed. Ain't nobody been blessed. All, I ain't seen nobody blessed yet. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm over 40 years. I've been, I've been in the church. I, I'm still waiting on that blessing. Right. Read. Book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Uh -huh. Repent, ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. That's how important it is to know the Most High God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Because an act of repentance can blot out of a, a past sin. We not being taught that. It say, repent you therefore and be converted. The Most High God's law, statute, commandments will convert you from a, a, a child to a man, from a young lady to a woman, because it's giving you the, uh, 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 your, the way that you should conduct yourself, and it's giving you the blueprint of how to get into the kingdom of heaven. Finish that out in Matthew 26. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. 
Matthew verse 26. So what you did right now was just an act of repentance. Right. You heard a, a, a law, you was given the law, you understood that law, and you turned and you and you turned to that law. You turned away from that sin that you was actually doing. You know what I'm saying? You took your head off because the uh, uh, the Bible says take your head off when you hear the Bible coming out. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 